Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present Apollo Lunar Direct and that is the mission plan where the command module itself lands on the moon. And to do that we need a larger rocket. And so we have here the Saturn C8 or the Nova rocket which has eight F1 engines at the bottom. This is the FASA model of it, which has sort of stretched textures and doesn't look great, but it's okay for now. We're testing the premise, not making it look good. So, the first stage was eight F1 engines instead of the usual five on Saturn V, but the second stage is still the same. It's an S2 stage with five J2s. No modifications, it's just the usual J2s, and I switch off the center engine per normal. And the next stage is just a normal S4B, and what I'm seeing in this launch is whether we can use the S4B to do most of the descent and just have the service module do the final touchdown. It turns out that there isn't enough Delta V for that, but I thought to try it out anyway. This came about because I saw Scott Manley and uh, space historian David Porti talking about this mission, and there was a diagram where the diagram had a separate descent stage with a whole J2 on it, and I go, that can't be good. <laughs> it can't be good. That's not the way to do it. Whatever they were thinking at the time, that didn't seem like the good thing to do. Now using the S4B stage in order to do the descent turned out to be not possible at all because it has too much boil off. So it's just boiling off all the propellant here. We were losing delta V and so I had to change plans. And so I wanted a low boil off mini stage with two RL10s. And so basically this is like a enlarged centaur stage. I put the center tank as the diameter of the centaur for reference and we have additional balloon tanks on the side. There is this RL10A-3-3 lunar option with throttling but I did not use that because I thought that was cheating because it was hypothetical. That's cheats. So I just used the standard RL10A-3-3 which they would have had at the time and so no cheats, and what we're going to do is we'll have the RL-10s do most of the descent and, and as well as the capture around the moon, but have the service module engine do the final touchdown, which is why we have the landing legs on the service module. This saves us from having a really tall stage to get off of. Uh, the landing legs might need to be a little bit bigger, but uh, they're still pretty heavy, so we're not undersizing them much. Uh, center engine cut off for the F1s there and now this means that the S4B this time will have to help us get into orbit just like it does on normal Saturn V and the S4B will transfer us to the moon but it only has to do a little bit to get us into orbit you can see we're nearly in orbit already it just needs to provide maybe 150 meters per second as opposed to for Saturn V it provided about 1300 2500 so here we go, and we will have enough for the transfer as well. I was wondering about that with this new RL-10 stage that I just cooked up. And so here is the transfer burn, and it has about 100 meters per second bonus. Uh, well, not quite that much when we take into account that we want to do a uh, free return trajectory-ish sort of deal. And... Here we are. I decided to keep the S4B stage just for the RCS to sell the fuel down ahead of the RL-10 stage. That's not necessary, it was just convenience. And so here the RL-10 stage is capturing us around the moon. And again, uh, a somewhat larger Centaur stage would be good as well. Somebody suggested putting like two Centaurs together or something. A real dual Centaur situation. And here we're doing the descent burn. This is similar to the Soviet plan for descent, in which case the block D does the initial descent burn and almost gets it down to the surface, but the lander itself does the final touchdown burn. And so same idea here. Uh, and the reason I thought about this was in that Twitter thread between Scott Manley and David Porti, they noted that, of course, the service module engine was sized for lunar liftoff. And based on that, I decided that this might be possible and would save us the awkward contraption that the apparent lunar descent plan had. Now, I've clipped the AJ-10-137 into the service module a little bit so that we didn't have 
to have two large landing legs, but this turned out to be a flaw. Well, first of all, I didn't really handle that separation very well. But the flaw is, it turns out that whoever made this model of the AJ-10-137 set the thrust vector inside the nozzle, all the way up into the throat. As a result, it did not provide any actual thrust. <laughs> so that's why, well, well, that's one reason why we crashed into the surface. So I couldn't use that AJ-10-137 model. Possibly the SSTU Labs one would have worked, but I didn't have SSTU Labs installed. So I replaced it with three AJ-10-190s. These are the engines on Orion, on the Orion service module, and also on the shuttle OMS engines. This is actually not good. Even though the AJ-10-190 is a more advanced engine, it's much lower in thrust, that's why we need three of them. And even those three combined do not provide the same thrust as the service propulsion system originally did. So we have less thrust, and more mass. The AJ-10-190 is, uh, individually they're lighter than the AJ-10-137, but three of them put together are heavier. So we lost Delta V net net. Uh, the efficiency in terms of specific impulse is about the same. So we didn't gain anything on efficiency. We do have a whole lot of ignitions, but we weren't going to use all of the ignitions on the surface propulsion system anyway. So yeah. Now, neither the AG-1019 nor the service propulsion system throttle. We're relying specifically on just a lot of ignitions. Well, really, uh, we don't need that many ignitions. Five would have done. It's not that hard to touch down, do a suicide burn on the moon without throttling. Because there's no atmosphere. Atmosphere would make it much worse. But uh, without the atmosphere, it's not too hard to judge. I say that, but... Um, I, it turns out that on this attempt, I had problems. I lit the RL-10 stage. I wanted to finish off the RL-10 stage and use all the Delta V from it. Uh, I wanted it to get us into a hover just before touchdown, but I misjudged when this, sh this burn should happen, this final burn. And so we crashed into the surface. Like so. And I try... Well, no, this, this isn't going to work. So that attempt did not work out very well either. However, interestingly, the service module uh, took on a life of its own. And the music was on point here. I just have a whole bunch of OC Remix tracks and uh, World of Warships tracks in VLC Media Player and it just shuffles them. But right here... That, that was perfect. And a lot of times during this... This was all during the live stream. Uh, a lot of times during this live stream, the music cues were pretty good. I mean, this song choice, again, randomly picked by VLC Media Play, was not too bad either. And we were watching this to see if we would randomly make orbit. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough patience, so I did physical time warp, and that probably threw it off. It might have made orbit if not for that, but with physical time warp, the wobbliness uh, went bad, and yeah, it did not. It ended up stalling out. They would crash into the surface. So anyway, this time I was resolving to be a little bit more careful. The problem is I wanted to be very cautious about how much fuel I use in the service module because we really don't have that much. We need to reserve enough fuel in the service module to lift off from the moon and get back home, right? That leaves us with maybe 200, 300 meters per second to do the final touchdown. And that's optimistic. That's... Uh, maybe calculating without the landing legs or something. Well, no, it does with the landing legs. But we, if we needed bigger landing legs, it would hurt. So, we, I was trying to use as much from that RL-10 stage as possible before touchdown, just to make sure that we had enough. But this time I decided, well, we'll just make sure that we land properly and I'll take whatever I need. And then, if we can't come back home, we'll find that out. So, here we go again for descent. And once again, we got rousing music. Sometimes we get elevator music during the dramatic stuff, uh, but on this stream, it turned out to be pretty good. So, here we go. I'm uh, We're way above the surface, and we're basically getting into a hover already. You can see we're way, way above. So I shut down the engine, and we sort of coast down. We still have 500 meters per second in this RL-10 stage. NASA could do this all better, obviously, so I'm using more margin than NASA would need. And so it's it's doable, it's certainly doable, but you needed the bigger rocket, you needed the eight F1s. 
But it's not that much of a difference when you think about it. And it sure simplifies the plan. I took off the docking port at the top of the command module, obviously. And it's possible we could lighten up the command module in various ways uh, by removing the stuff that involved the lunar module, right? Anything that involved docking would not be necessary. So that's a thought. Alright, so here we are on Final Descent. We're still pretty high up, as you can see. So, we're using more, and we don't have that much margin. You see, we have 3,060-ish meters per second as we light here. And this is a little bit early, so I shut down and then light lower down. Uh, I was budgeting 2,000 to return to lunar orbit and 800 to do the burn to get back home. That was the budget. So, we had 200 to do this, 250-ish. And I managed that. As you can see, we're doing well. I think the service module, uh, the service propulsion engine doesn't have gimbling, so that might be a benefit of the AJ 10190s in this case. But honestly, it wasn't that necessary. We were just straight up and down by that point, and I don't think the gimbling was critical. I did not put a ladder, it wasn't physically important to us, as I point out the remains of the other stage. And the music is again on point, a little bit delayed, but it was pretty good. Uh, it would have worked out better if I delayed the landing a little bit. Anyway, this was also a pretty cool, cool tune to be going off of the surface with. But uh, yeah, no ladder, so no plant a flag or anything. The ladder mass would be trivial in terms of the Delta V, so... In real life, not that trivial, but not horrible. Okay. And obviously they would be able to get a better variant of the AJ-10, something that wouldn't be so heavy, so... So basically I would expect NASA to be in a better situation overall than all of this, and the fact that I'm able to do this at all means that it could have been done. Uh, and uh, here we are returning back home, and we have... You can see the barest amount of margin on the Delta V there with the service module, but we make it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be presenting this to you. So, this is, was an idea. Anyway, uh, I thought I should try it out. And, you know, the service module plus the command module isn't too tall. It's pretty tall, but it's not so ridiculously tall as the plan that uh, was posted. We actually skip out of the atmosphere because I misjudged what periapsis we needed. So, but that's not a problem. Our orbit was short enough that we could hit again and it didn't really need too much adjustment on the periapsis to do it properly. Uh, so, there we are. So that was the idea. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.